so yeah, I'm, I'm Scott Sunvor. I'm one of the founders of Six Sensor Labs. We started uh, here in Boston about, about two years ago, started out of MIT, and we are making uh, a sensor for people with food allergies so that you can test your food on the spot, make sure that's safe before you eat it. And uh, today I want to talk to you about sensors of the living world and um, going beyond just what we're doing, going beyond just food allergies, and um, talk to you about how we can really um, empower ourselves. Everyone in here really, uh, I mean, uh, everyone in the developed world can empower ourselves to really take our health uh, into our own hands. So, food. Uh, food, this is one of the most fundamental essentials of daily life. Uh, I mean, food brings joy, it brings nourishment, it brings health. And um, for some people, food can actually uh, make them sick. The different things in the food can have an adverse uh, impact on them. And it's really difficult to actually know what's in, in your food. Uh, I don't know when the last time you tried to read uh, the ingredients label on, say, a box of cereal is. And uh, it's difficult to decipher that. It's difficult to understand that. Uh, we hear all the time about food being recalled, about um, E. coli. If you ever hear about um, food safety in China, um, it's a big issue. We just we don't know. It's really, really difficult to know. Uh, and so I want to tell you a little bit about, about my story, my, uh, my personal story. And uh, some of this is, is what has motivated me um, to, to start Six Sensor and uh, what motivates me today. So uh, I have a condition called ulcerative colitis. It's uh, an autoimmune disease that um, causes ulcers in your intestines. And there's really no known cause, no known cure. Um, and the medicine, it, it treats the symptoms but doesn't really cure, uh, cure the condition. So I've been taking medicine for this for about the past eight years. And more recently, I, I started just getting kind of annoyed with it, getting fed up with it. And uh, I decided that I wanted to try to take my health into my own hands. I wanted to try to do something about it. And, um, and I did. So now today, I'm, I, wear, I wear a Fitbit day and night. Um, and I track my activity. I track my sleep. And I've started correlating how that impacts my health. Uh, I use an app on my phone uh, that helps helps me meditate. It helps guide meditation, and it helps me track that. And now I understand how that really mental state of mind can impact my health. Um, I've sequenced my microbiome and compared it to healthy people. I've uh, done blood tests to understand my nutrient levels. And the the thing is, it's this is something that is possible now. It's the 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 future is now. The sensors of the living world that we need for this, it's possible. And um, this is really what, what motivates me. It's personal for me. And for my co-founder, too, she has celiac disease uh, and various other food allergies. So she has to be really careful with what she eats. And uh, it's, it's just these, these personal drivers for us that um, really are, are some of the big reasons why we, we started this company and why we really believe so strongly in um, these sensors of the living world. And, uh, and as I mentioned, that's, that's the exciting part. We're, we're able to do that now. Um, the technology is, is really starting to get ready, and, and we can start uh, doing this on our own. Uh, so going back to food, uh, this is an interesting stat that, that we heard, um, that produce travels on average 1,500 miles before it gets to your plate. So uh, the delicious salad that we had for lunch today it had about five main ingredients. Uh, so you can think that was about 7,500 miles that that salad traveled to get to us here today. That's like going to California and back. Um, just for that produce. So that's pretty crazy. Like what, what can happen in that huge amount of distance? We, we just don't know right now. And so our food starts as a seed. It grows up on a farm. It gets transported to a distribution center. It gets packaged. It goes to store shelves. It might go to a restaurant. There's all these steps from farm to fork that we just don't really understand yet. And we don't really know what happens in, in these periods of time. Um, and uh, this was a study that was done uh, recently that found that over 60% of the bread that we eat has detectable levels of Roundup in it. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I don't keep a bottle of Roundup in my fridge next to the Tabasco and Ranch. Uh, I don't want Roundup in my food. And uh, this was shocking to me. Uh, this was a, a study that a Swedish company did. They gave um, a family that normally they just ate standard normal food um, and they put them on a 100% organic diet for one week. And these were the results. Uh, look, I mean, look at this cute kid. This, these pesticides were in his pee. That's, that's not right. Uh, and nobody really knows that until someone does a study like this. Uh, so that is why we started Six Sensor Labs. We, we want to take this idea right now. People don't really know what's in their food. 
And we want to move that to knowing what's in your food, but we want to move beyond that and go to trusting your food. And we want to create this idea of food transparency, of uh, really understanding what, what is there and, and, and knowing what's there and um, really just living your, your healthiest life and, and being your best self. And um, do, do any of you in here know people with food allergies? Can raise a hand. Yeah, so, so a, lot of, a lot of you know people with food allergies. And the unfortunate fact right now is um, that eating is a gamble for, for some of these people. And there's no proactive solution. The only thing they can do is stab an EpiPen into their leg and hope that that helps. And still, they would have to go to the hospital afterwards. So this is, is not a good solution. And um, that's why we created the NEMA, which is the first connected allergen sensor. The first product is for gluten. And it lets uh, people that have a food allergy test their food on the spot and make sure that it's safe before they eat it. So to do this, we, really, we wanted to, to create this really beautiful, easy to use, user-friendly design. And so you just take a sample of your food, put it into this capsule that you can see, put that into the device, and then within two minutes you get a test result. And that's the, the idea that we have for, for all of these sensors of the living world. For these things to be adopted, they, they need to be easy, they need to be friendly, they need to be beautiful um, for you to accept these products into your life. So uh, I want to talk a little more about the reason why we're doing this. And I, I gave you my personal story, a little bit of, of Shreen, my co-founder's personal story. Um, this is the entryway uh, to our office, and we have a wall of quotes. People email us almost every day um, about their story or uh, products that they want. Um, and I just I want to read, read one of these to you that, that really resonated to me. It says, this year, my fiance was diagnosed with celiac disease after years of mystery illnesses. It was a scary time for both of us, watching her waste away, both silently wondering if she was dying. Now that we know about the autoimmune disease and its triggers, my fiance has never felt better. She now knows what it's like for someone to hold your hand without your skin hurting. The social impact of the disease has been devastating, however. No more family picnics, no more eating out, no more enjoying someone else's home cooking. The risks far outweigh the benefits and can result in weeks of pain. The isolationist attitude can be debilitating. I've, I've read this probably, I don't know, 20 times, and I still get shivers every time I read it. And that's, that's why we're doing this. That's why we're building this. That's, that's why our, our company exists. And the technology... Is, is ready, it's been ready. And the thing that, that's been happening recently is consumer psychology has caught up. Um, over 65% of people in America own a smartphone, one in five own a wearable, um, one in 10 use it regularly, and these numbers are only increasing. So consumers are ready for these products. People want technology in their lives, they expect it. Uh, if, I mean, if you go a day without your smartphone or email, uh, we freak out, right? So people expect these things in, in their lives. And uh, the, the living world is becoming digitized. Uh, what we've done is we've taken lab results and we've been able to put that in your pocket. We've taken a lab and shrunk it in, into that size. And um, it's not just us. Other companies are doing it too. There's a company called Q that's making um, an at-home sensor that you can test your hormone levels or um, test if you have influenza. And they can actually track the spread of influ influenza across America using that data. And there's a company called Sio that's giving... Um, on the spot nutrition information in your food. So um, there's other companies doing this too, and uh, we only see this becoming a lot bigger and, um, and really becoming uh, everywhere. We want to see these products in, in everyone's pocket, in everyone's uh, restaurant table. So the way that we think that this has to happen for these products to um, become ubiquitous is to really empower our users. And the first way to do that is on the individual level and that's with great design. So for us, that meant really understanding our users um, before we ever started building. So we had user interviews, we built personas, we challenged our assumptions, we really tried to dig deep and, um, and really understand everything about our users and what their wants were, what their needs were, uh, before we ever started building our product. Uh, and this point, if, if there's one thing that you can take away from this talk, this is what I want it to be. There is no such thing as user error. 
And actually, Blade Catelli, who, who spoke this morning, um, the vice president of design at Jibo, uh, he was one of my, my professors, and, and he taught me this, and it really stuck with me. We cannot blame our users for our products working incorrectly. If there is, is an issue that we've identif identified or something that can go wrong with the product, it's on us to design around that. It's on us to fix those problems before they ever get to the user. We can't blame our users. And so one example of this is, is with our products. So you can see um, our most recent design on the, on the top right there. Um, and these other renderings are some of our earlier designs. So our product has chemistry in it, it has uh, liquid. And for that to work correctly, it has to flow downwards. So it works under gravity, it has to flow down. That means that if someone lays it flat on the table, the product won't work. And so some of these earlier concepts that we had, the sketches that you can see, um, when we gave them to users, early prototypes, and we asked them, oh, like, will, you, will you place this on the table for me? Um, they would lay it down flat almost every time. And so we realized that was a source of what some people might call user error. Um, and we wanted to design around that. So we kept iterating, we, and we finally got to this design that has some curvature to it. This shape encourages people to set it up upright. And when we've given this product to people and asked them to set it on the table, 99% of the time, they set it the right way. And that means that before ever releasing the product, before ever having that, that problem, we've been able to design around that user error. So once we've really empowered our users on the individual level, we need to empower the community. And the way that, that we do this is through, through data and by leveraging data in the right way. And the, the thing with this is that, and pe several people have talked about it today, which I, I think is really great, but um, there's this, this creepiness power, and we have to factor, and we have to, do, um, we have to deal with data in a very socially conscious way. Uh, so these are some stats on, on gluten-free dishes. In uh, last year, over 200 million gluten-free dishes were ordered. And testing that we've done at restaurants with food that was labeled gluten-free has showed that 25% of those dishes are wrong. They actually have gluten, and that can get people sick. So with our product, every time someone uses the product, every time someone takes a test, they can share that data with a broader community. And that one data point on that one dish can help keep hundreds, maybe thousands of people safe. And so that's what we mean about empowering this community. Every person can empower the community. The community can empower everyone else. So um, with these different senses of the living world, that's the same idea. And with Q, the company I'd mentioned earlier, they can understand how influenza is spreading and help stop that through data and really just empowering that community. And that's the trend that we see these living world sensors going in. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's, that's what we see today. Um, we're, we're digitizing chemistry. Other, other companies are uh, working on similar things. Biology, the, the living world. Uh, we just had a speaker talk about the physical world. And we really believe that uh, people can empower themselves. That everyone here can be empowered to take control of their health and to take control of their, of their lives in, in this way through uh, this digital world that we're, that we're all a part of now. Uh, and before I close, I want to read um, the last half of, of that quote that, that I read to you earlier um, that someone had sent us. So the last part of the email said, recently I saw an article on this, and I cannot tell you how happy I am. The work you're doing has the promise of giving back a lifestyle that was no longer available. Keep up the great work, and good luck. Thank you. So this is the impact that our company, other companies, um, can have on people and uh, we just feel so excited about it, so passionate about it. So my ask for you guys is if you know anyone who has food allergies, celiac disease, um, just, I mean, other, other issues like this, send them to our website, to our social media. We want to talk to them. We want to help. Uh, thank you very much.